Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to Christ Church. My name's Ken Malcolm. It is my pleasure as always to be here with you all this morning. We're so excited to celebrate Easter and to celebrate resurrection. Just a couple of uh, housekeeping things. Back over here, we have a quiet room and a nursery if you need to take advantage of that. Bathrooms are over here. And of course, our playground is always open for children of all ages who need <laughs> to uh, get their wiggles out during the, during the service. So please take advantage of that. We're just really excited to have you all here and really uh, we're ready to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Our opening hymn today is Jesus Christ is Risen Today. One, two, three, four. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened up to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain of the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 118. Savior, let's sing together. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His, His mercy, mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His, His mercy, mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord ha has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty.
a reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I have proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I have proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time. Most of them are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and they fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. I realized walking in that my prop from my sermon for the kids is still taped to the front of the table. But uh, I think Alleluia is okay. <laughs> That'll be all right. We had, a, we had a great first service, and honestly, y'all, there were hundreds of kids here. It might have been for the Easter egg hunt, but um, or my sermon, (laughs) one of the two. I'm just saying, it was it was a great celebration. I was sitting at a pub once, the Crown and Anchor, when I overheard a conversation that began with "Yeah, but that doesn't explain the resurrection." Now you need to know the Crown and Anchor is a short walk equidistant between the Seminary of the Southwest and Austin Presbyterian Seminary. So what seems like kind of an unusual conversation actually wasn't. Well, the resurrection's impossible to prove, one said to the other, and nearly impossible to believe was their reply. Then like good seminary students, they turned to atonement theory and theology. Resurrection. All of us that are really honest with ourselves wonder about such things. Miracles, yes, but this seems to be an order of magnitude greater. 
But theology, especially bad theology, is very attractive, and it opens up ways for us to uh, understand it. To see resurrection as the miracle of truth that never dies. An existential presence thing. You know, some sort of spiritual nurturing. Faith and hope in the presence of doubt and fear. Sure, all of that. But what about bodily resurrection? We might be able to get away with some of those ideas for a little while with Matthew and certainly with Luke and John as long as we stop at the empty tomb. But this is Mark's gospel. It begins in fear with the wild and dangerous John the Baptist, and it ends in fear with three women running from an empty tomb because the angel has just told them Jesus is alive. You see, Mark, Mark is street theater. Mark grinds and pushes against the rough edges of life, and it pushes back. No happy endings, no nice bows on top of the Easter basket with Mark, just the reality of fear and ecstasy held up to the rough edges of life. This empty tomb, this story in Mark flings open my Christological closet full of anxieties. And I come face to face with the one part of Jesus' story that could never happen. And so I find myself looking for things to fill the empty tomb with that will ease my anxiety. Jesus lives in the resurrection like the teachings of Aquinas and Augustine live today. That'll do. Except it won't. Because the empty tomb can only be filled with God. So my attempt to tame the story gets washed out to sea with the Easter tide. We're left with an empty tomb and three women running away. Mark forces us to make a decision about what we believe. There are no post-resurrection appearances, no upper room appearance, no story of Thomas, no breakfast by the lake with the disciples, no road to Emmaus, just an empty tomb and an encounter with the divine. We are left with the witness of Jesus' life and ministry and our community's ability to believe. In Jesus' baptism and in the story of his transfiguration and crucifixion, we are presented with these profound moments in his life that come together and show us pictures of when the cosmic and the created worlds collide with each other. And they are signposts that lead us to resurrection. Think back about Jesus' baptism. He comes out of the water. The sky rips apart. God pours in. And he hears, you are my son, the beloved. I've delighted in choosing you. I imagine his head was spinning. I imagine he wondered if anybody else saw the, heard the voice. But Mark says they didn't. You are my son. At the transfiguration, the story with Peter and James and John on top of the mountain, the circle widens. And now we're a part of the story. This one, the voice says, this one is my son. Listen to him. Now we're in the story. Now we're there with Jesus. Which brings us to an empty tomb. These women having, women having followed Jesus from Galilee and who, when every single one of the male disciples abandoned him, stayed at the cross until he was dead. These courageous women 
coming in grief and probably anger at sunrise to anoint the body of their beloved rabbi. But he's gone. Don't be alarmed, the angel says. Maybe the greatest understatement in the history of understatements. Don't be alarmed, Jesus of Nazareth is not here. He's been raised. Go tell Peter and the disciples, he will see you in Galilee. Confusion, recognition, remembering Jesus' promise. After I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. And they flee out of fear and amazement. I don't know that there's anywhere, any other way to react to that except to run. Jesus didn't take away their fear, and resurrection didn't take away their fear, and I think that's really important for us today. But it enabled them to carry on. The women's actions following his death well, they seem to me like the definition of courage. Did it really happen? Can we prove it? Of course not. But the witness of the life of Jesus leads me to the undeniable conclusion that Jesus' story does not end on the cross. And our faith doesn't smooth out the rough edges, y'all. It allows us to flourish when life is difficult. Don't be afraid, the angel says. This charge gives us insight, I think, into the very nature of our lives in the world, for there is much to fear in our lives. And yet the resurrection comes with the possibility of hope, right? And joy and courage because it changes everything. In the resurrection, we have God's promise that life is stronger than death, that love is greater than hate, that mercy overcomes judgment, that suffering doesn't have the last word, and that death doesn't have the last word. Jesus, out of love, Jesus, out of love, gave up what human beings hold most dear, life. And life and love are forever redefined. Life becomes love, and love becomes the source of life. It was at the cross where the worst that humanity can do to one another was revealed and it's in the resurrection that we learn about God. I know it's all completely unbelievable. No one really believed it then either. Not Peter, not Thomas, not the other disciples. No one except the women spreading the word. And quite frankly, who can blame them? I mean, resurrection isn't simply a claim that Jesus was resuscitated. It is a claim that God entered human history and creates an entirely new reality. Resurrection turns our neatly ordered lives upside down, which is why I think if we don't find it a little bit hard to understand we probably aren't taking it very seriously. Those seminary students were right. It's hard to understand. But when it sinks in and when it takes hold, absolutely everything changes. Like the Psalm 118, verse 23 from today, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Amen.
Please join me as we proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he goes again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Even the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Like Mary, we may not recognize Jesus, though he stands before us. Give us ears to hear when you call us by name. And open our eyes, Lord, so that we may see you as we sing. Alleluia. Lord, help us truly to be your church. Help us become makers of justice and lovers of mercy. Help us to trust in you more deeply so we may be friends of God and ministers to the world. Open our eyes, Lord, so that we may see you as we sing. Lord, stir our hearts to believe your promise of a new creation. We pray for this nation and all in authority. We pray for all the peoples of the earth whom you call to your feast. Open our eyes, Lord, so that we may see you as we sing. We pray for those who need relief from hunger, homelessness, anxiety, pain, addiction, or from anything else that undermines their sense of being your beloved children. Give us the wisdom and courage to ask when we need help and to be a part of the answer when others ask. Open our eyes, Lord, so that we may see you as we sing. Finally, Lord, we give you thanks for those who have already joined you in your heavenly kingdom, especially those we name at this time. Paul, Everett, Tony, Floyd, Mary Ellen. Even as they already see you face to face, we ask you to open our eyes, Lord, so that we may see you as we sing.
and praise his Father through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, through whom with the Holy Spirit we give honor and glory and worship. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Well, good morning again and happy Easter. My name is Adam Williams. I'm the minister to families here at Christ Church. And on behalf of our staff and our vestry, we especially welcome those of you who are visitors or newish to Christ Church and those of you worshiping from home. Uh, whether you're worshiping at home or in the building, you can scan a QR code on your bulletin to find out more about Christ Church, fill out a connection card, and we will uh, connect with you this week to further welcome you into the life of our church here uh, at Christ Church. With, uh, in regards to youth ministry and children's ministry, there are lots of things going on. Please visit our website to find out all the things that are happening uh, this Easter season. And uh, for more information about all of our ministries, you can log on to our website or visit Realm at any time. Again, welcome to Christ Church. Thanks, Adam. When we have Eucharist here in just a moment, please know that all are welcome to receive. We'll have three communion stations, one over here, one over here, and one in the middle. And please uh, let the ushers sort of guide you. And if, if you get missed, come on down. You know, that, you know that we missed you. One of the things that we do here that's a little different is we invite people forward from the back to the front. So uh, people will be coming by you, but we, we won't forget about you. And I know there are a lot of visitors and a lot of family members here today, and you are most welcome. And uh, we do, we have a lot going on and do some amazing work together, and we'll be here next Sunday at the same time. <laughs> so please, that, I hear that as an invitation. You are always most welcome here with us. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
is the one who has overcome the grave. Let the people dance, let the people sing. Worthy is the mighty King. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy of our praise. Worthy is the one who has overcome the grave. Let the people dance, let the people sing. Worthy is the mighty King. Worthy is the Lamb, worthy of our praise. Worthy is the one who has overcome the grave. Let the people dance, let the people sing. Worthy is the Worthy is the man, worthy of our praise, worthy is the one who has 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God, and you are the people of God.
and sing together. There is a peace I've come to know. There's a peace I've come to know. Through my heart and flesh may fail. There's an anchor for my soul. I can say it is well. Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is gone. He is risen from the dead and I will
heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, to honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Stand. When I stand in that place, free at last. 